Welcome to Zoo Babies. This time we'll be meeting some very fluffy, furry and funny new additions to the animal kingdom. First, let's say hello to this baby bull elephant. The baby is a new boy. And in order to protect her new son, his mother Ida wouldn't allow anyone to come close while she tried to help him stand up on his own four feet. Born just minutes earlier, the baby bull was keen to get moving, but it took him a little while for his wobbly legs to hold him up. He had to use the wall for support. It was a very emotional day for the happy keepers, who'd been sleeping near Ryder in the two weeks leading up to the birth. You, you can see every keeper here in this house have a, a pleasant and a, a sweetheart for elephants. Ida has now given birth to four baby elephants, making Copenhagen Zoo the most successful elephant breeding program in Europe. The arrival of a star is always awaited with great excitement and anticipation by the press and public alike. Here at Almaty Zoo in Kazakhstan, it's the first public appearance of a very special zoo baby that's attracting all the attention from reporters and cameramen, as well as the odd amateur artist. The arrival of baby Zebra Mary into the world has become a real event at the zoo, not only for the staff, but for the whole Kazakh community. The name Mary means long awaited in the local language. The reason little Mary is being given such VIP treatment is that zebra births in captivity are very rare. In order for zebras to breed in zoos, the conditions must be as close to their natural habitat in the wild as possible. They need to be able to roam freely in spacious open air cages and eat lots of food. Zebras are known for their distinctive white and black stripes, which come in different patterns. In fact, no two zebra stripes ever grow in exactly the same way, so it's possible to tell them apart. These two gorgeous baby leopards are the first of their kind to be born in a South Korean zoo. The baby leopards, or cubs, attracted lots of attention from visitors. After drinking their mother's milk for two months, the zoo recently began introducing chicken and beef into the cubs' diet. But as they walk and play, they never stray far away from their ever-watchful mum. The leopard will eat almost anything from dung beetles to monkeys, rodents, reptiles, snakes, birds and fish. It's a powerful swimmer, although it's not quite as fond of the water as some of the other big cats, such as the tiger. The leopard is also a great jumper and can leap and run very far. It mainly moves around and hunts at night, spending much of its day resting and sleeping. Sometimes they like to laze around in the branches of a tree. At other times they lie under rocks or stretch out on the grass. But at this age, these baby leopards are having far too much fun to sit still. Over in Tokyo, there are plenty of brand new babies to keep visitors to the local zoo snapping away for hours on their cameras. In this zoo, visitors are rarely treated to the sight of mothers and their newborn together. But this year, there's been a big baby boom. For the first time in six years, keepers at Tama Zoo were delighted to welcome new additions to the endangered orangutan and koala families. Last year, the zoo saw the births of a baby chimp, a giraffe and a tiger cub, all of whom recently made their first public appearances. And not surprisingly, the new arrivals were very popular. One keeper suggested that one of the reasons the zoo had seen such a rash of bouncing babies could have been to do with recent improvements to animals' cages and enclosures. He thought that the renovations may have made the mothers feel more relaxed and comfortable. 
The koala, which comes from Australia, has a thick furry coat and large sharp claws that help it cling to the trunks of eucalyptus trees. The orangutans are great apes, known for their intelligence, red hair and long arms, which are twice the length of their legs. Their fingers and toes are curved, which helps them cling on to branches. Over in another enclosure, a young giraffe is enjoying the sunshine and attracting lots of attention from young members of another species. Meanwhile, our closest relatives, the chimpanzees, are having lots of fun playing with the newest member of their family. This little cutie will grow up to be around a metre tall and could live as long as 60 years in the zoo. They are so similar to humans that, like us, they will often make tools such as spears for hunting. A rare albino wallaby, believed to be the first ever to be born in captivity in Latin America, was having a good wash before his first public appearance at the Buenos Aires Zoo. Zoo vets say the cub was born five months ago in the zoo after five wallabies that were brought all the way from their native Australia began to breed. The head vet, Miguel Revolta, said this is the first time the zoo has seen this type of birth. He says the chances of a white wallaby being born are extremely rare. The white fur is caused by a genetic condition in wallabies that occurs only once in around 10,000 births. And Miguel is delighted that this shy albino cub chose to be born here. This two-week-old black panther is called Malika. She was adopted by a dog when zookeepers discovered that her mother was not able to look after her. The vets paired the tiny cub up with a Rhodesian Ridgeback, who had just given birth to her own eight puppies. The panther cub now has to battle with eight newborn Ridgebacks for milk from her adopted mother and needs all the help she can get from zookeepers to compete with the much stronger puppies. Director of Belgrade Zoo, Vuk Bojovic, said the matching of a panther with a ridgeback is a very unusual one. Malika means the sweet one, but if everything goes well and Malika makes it into adulthood, she'll be more than able to stand up for herself against her adoptive siblings. Panthers, which are simply a black version of the more familiar leopard, can also sometimes be tawny, spotted or even white. The name is Shan, Tai Shan, and plenty of effort was spent first on the search and then the unveiling of the name of the 100-day-old panda cub in Washington's National Zoo. Accompanied by two Chinese dance troops, the director of the zoo, John Berry, revealed the name Tai Shan, which means peaceful mountain. And he's 13 pounds, and he's soon going to exert a little bit of independence from his mother. In the first few weeks, the male cub's first distinctive panda markings appeared as his fur started to grow. Next, his eyes, which had been tightly shut, opened. At first, it was hard for keepers to get a good look at his tiny body, as his mother, Mei Shong, cradled him in her arms when she nursed him. The zoo also released a video of a recent medical exam giving a rare glimpse of the panda cub, which so far has not yet been displayed to the public. Now he's more than two feet long, his teeth are coming in, he's almost walking and is spending a bit more time away from his mum. Chinese custom dictates a 100-day waiting period before the naming of a new cub. During the waiting period, officials at the zoo held an online naming contest to allow the public to vote for the name from a list of five choices. More than 200,000 people from around the world took part, and the name Tai Shan was the overwhelming favorite, with more than 44% of the vote.
Argentinians flock to the Buenos Aires Zoo to see two baby North American bison recently born in captivity. The tiny one and three day old babies were a far cry from their big and hulky father, but they represented an important step in bison conservation efforts according to the zoo. The birth of the male and female bison were part of a carefully planned project developed by the zoo. 200 years ago, millions of bison roamed through North America, according to the Canadian Wildlife Service. But during the 1800s, it was heavily hunted for its meat and skin and came very close to extinction. Argentina's newborn bison were both fathered by the same bull. And zoo officials say they'll eventually be sent to other zoos to help boost their numbers in captivity even more. The bison is the largest land animal in North America. In the wild, they run in herds, grazing like cattle. In American culture, the bison is commonly known as the buffalo. They have a fairly simple diet and mainly eat grass and low-lying leaves from bushes. These five baby boomers at the Safari Wildlife Park in West Java have been keeping the zoo's nursery and handlers very busy. Two-week-old Madeka, an African white rhino calf, is the least needy of the five as he stays close to his mother's side. The birth of Madeka was something of a breakthrough for the Safari Park. He's the first white rhino to be born in captivity in Indonesia. The calf is the fifth white rhino in the zoo's collection, and little Madeka joins two full-grown bulls and two female white rhinos. Madeka means freedom, and he was born two days before Indonesia's Independence Day, earning him the patriotic name. Second to the elephant in size among land mammals, the African white rhino is an endangered species. Madeka was born to mother Hema and father Hoffel, both of whom were brought over to the safari park six years ago from the Singapore Zoo and the San Diego Zoo. <laughs> Meanwhile, over in the animal hospital, four other newborns are not quite so lucky. Two orangutans, one leopard and a chimpanzee were abandoned by their mothers after birth. Adam, Mahadika, Ayu and Emmy keep handlers at the zoo's nursery on their toes all day and night as they cry for attention and demand playtime. Three handlers take it in turns to care for the four, all of whom still need to be bottle fed and all but the baby leopard must stay inside their incubators. This little cub looks lost without its mum, but it soon cheers up with a tummy full of milk and a cuddle from one of the nursery's doting handlers. While the baby chimp is cherishing the opportunity to practice its communication skills. Before having its nappy changed. Not to be outdone by Belgrade Zoo and its panther-adopting Ridgeback, San Diego Zoo has decided that a dog may also be a lion's best friend. This male cub was born last November, but when his mother showed little interest in little Koza, keepers decided that he would need to be raised by hand. Concerned at Koza's lack of furry playmates, they introduced him to a puppy, and it didn't take long for the two to bond. The funny duo recently made their debut at the San Diego Zoo's Wild Animal Park, and Koza put on a show for the visiting photographers. When the lion gets large enough, he'll be introduced to a group of older lions at the 1,800-acre park. The pair will soon move to lion camp, where they will have a field to play in. They're very social. Uh, animals and they enjoy having other animals to interact with. The unlikely friends will eventually have to part, but for now they're just enjoying each other's company.
Keepers at Singapore Zoo were excited to announce that for the first time in the zoo's 29-year history, okay. a cheetah had successfully given birth to four adorable cubs and are sure to become star attractions at the renowned park. Cheetahs are notoriously difficult to breed in captivity, as they are more wary than other big cats of potential mates. The proud parents were among a group of cheetahs brought from South Africa for breeding last year. Cheetahs can have up to nine cubs at once, and the little ones are born with downy white fur all down their backs. In the wild, only about half of all cheetah cubs will make it to adulthood, but here, these youngsters stand a far better chance. You know, the mother is a first-time mother, and she's an excellent mother, you know, and she looks after the cubs very well. In the wild, cheetahs are having a hard time of it, and estimates put their total number at around just 12,000. The fast loss of their habitat, combined with a low survival rate amongst cubs, not to mention fierce competition among young adult males, pose further risks to the future of this beautiful hunter, which can run at speeds of up to 120 kilometers an hour. While all the attention was being lavished on the baby cheetahs, another zoo newcomer slipped quietly onto the scene in the shape of a newborn Malaysian sun bear. The smallest bear on the planet, the tropical sun bear also faces massive pressure on its native rainforest environment. Found in Southeast Asia, the sun bear, also known as the honey bear, does not hibernate, so it's able to mate all year round. Its inward turned feet make the bear pigeon toed, but it is brilliant at climbing. Its curved claws and naked soles of the feet are also good for getting up trees, where they like to lay around during the day. The arrival of the baby cheetahs and sun bear were just part of the zoo's baby boom, which also included the birth of a white rhino. It, it doesn't always occur, you know, it's something like a baby boom for the zoo. Uh, this happened, I think, uh, about five years ago, where we have so many animals giving birth. And we are so proud, no? especially this holiday season, we have so many births. Yeah. After entertaining the public on their first big outing away from mum, the cheetah cubs were taken on another adventure aboard the zoo's staff buggy. Cradled safely in the keeper's arms, they were off to rest up at the end of a long and tiring day. After their first photo call, it was back to their enclosure to meet someone who was very relieved to see them. From now on, the young cheetahs will be kept away from the public for a few months and will only be named after a special competition is held to pick appropriate ones. In the meantime, these beautiful cats will be allowed to grow up under mum's care. Ah, okay, okay. The annual stock take at Hamburg's Hagenbeck Zoo created some serious challenges as keepers try to count, measure and weigh more than 2,500 animals from 360 different species. The job is important because it's through regular checks on such details that the keepers can make sure the animals are being properly looked after. But sometimes it's hard work. It took several men to carry a giant turtle to the scale to measure its weight. This healthy specimen weighed in at a little under 200 kilograms. These ancient creatures date back 215 million years, making them one of the world's oldest reptile groups. Caretakers of Little Candy were especially pleased by the progress the Asian elephant had made since she was born. According to her proud handlers, she's the first captive elephant in Germany to be born within a herd, which is how elephants are born in the wild. Candy had already grown about half a metre, and it wasn't just the public who were interested to know how she was getting on. 
a fellow elephants were also poking their trunks in. Next, it was the turn of the llamas. Originating from the central plains of North America, these woolly creatures can grow to around six feet. Then it was on to the rather more tricky job of counting the flamingos. One clever keeper suggested that the easiest way to count these brightly coloured South American birds would be to count their legs and divide the number by two. But as this poor chap found out, trying to count 130 flamingos on the move is virtually impossible, especially when they keep changing direction. These strange-looking birds wade through shallow water looking for brine shrimp to eat. Their hooked beaks are used upside down to filter mud and silt out of their food. Flamingos are born an off-white or grey colour, and they develop their bright pink colouring from the beta-carotene in their diet, which comes from the shrimps. When flamingo chicks are young, they're fed milk by both of their parents, until their beaks have developed enough for them to forage for food. And while the flamingos are still being counted, the zoo's camels are being treated to a day trip. Meanwhile, back in Buenos Aires Zoo, the stork has been busy delivering beautiful babies to many of the inhabitants here. Originally from the highland areas of Madagascar, two of the zoo's sun-worshipping ring-tailed lemurs have given birth, one of them to twins. Although lemurs do breed readily in captivity, it's very rare that a female will give birth to two babies at once. The lemur's trademark, a long bushy tail, is ringed in 26 black and white rings. The lemurs aren't alone in getting good news. The red-necked wallabies have had their first baby after arriving here just six months ago. As soon as baby wallabies are born, they climb up the hair on their mother's stomach to get to the small pouch where they stay suckling for four more months. After a few timid outings into the world, the baby wallaby finally leaves the pouch at nine months, although it continues to suckle until it's a year old. According to the zoo's resident biologist, Louis Jacom, the flurry of births in Buenos Aires Zoo is of huge importance when it comes to preserving and understanding certain species of animals. Five Chilean flamingos were also born in the zoo recently, it's extremely difficult for this species to reproduce, and the zoo's technical team had to work hard to bring about the births of these rare birds that will soon turn pink. Children from the Argentine capital are being asked to come up with names for the fluffy new chicks. Join us next time on Zoo Babies for lots more chicks, calves and cubs.